Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Aaron Blade, and I'm the editor, creator, and producer of what you're watching right now, Blade Talk. If you are new here, welcome, and you find this presentation helpful, informative, do me a huge favor and hit that like button, do me an even greater favor and subscribe to my channel. I always appreciate all the support that I am given. So, I wanted to make another presentation addressing the Israeli Hamas conflict because Hamas has decided to make today Friday the 13th um, they're calling for uh, people around the world to essentially commit violence against Jews so I'm telling people that are observing Shabbat like myself to please be safe, please be careful because we hear Hamas is calling for violence and I just wanted to address this and try to share some of my thoughts again on this whole conflict. Okay, so I want to discuss the questions that I've received about, you know, hey Blade, I have family members, friends that are posting, I stand with Palestine and, and what that means. And I want to address this because today, um, Hamas has declared it a rage day. Um, they're calling for international help to attack Jewish institutions. So, to all of my Jews all across the world, please be safe as we celebrate Shabbat. One of the things that <clears throat> I fought for in my military career is the freedom of speech in this country of America. People can say whatever they want to say. They can um, protest, etc. But I just want to highlight the fact that these same individuals that are protesting, stating that they stand with Palestine, I find it interesting that there are no moderates. There are none that are condemning what Hamas has done. Do you see any of the protesters, any of the the I stand with Palestine um, saying that, you know, we should release the hostages. No. They look at it from a standpoint of they were being oppressed. And I always say on that point, we agree. The Palestinians are oppressed. But it's not by Israel. In Gaza, Israel abandoned the area and gave it to the Palestinians in 2005. In 2006, they held an election and voted Hamas in. Hamas is a terrorist organization. People like to mince words and try to say that it's a political movement. It is not. It is a terrorist organization that don't care about its people. They don't care about life. They don't care about children. They don't care about any of it. And what I've noticed is 
the Muslims, the Palestinians, the people that stand with Palestine, even Black Lives Matter put out a, a post, I stand with Palestine, right? Notice that they're not condemning what Hamas has done. Notice they're not saying they should release the hostages. See, two things can be true at once. You can have sympathy for the innocent Palestinians that are losing their lives. It's fine. My heart goes out to them as well. But why aren't you condemning the actions of Hamas? 1,400 people dead. Innocent people dead. We have 14 Americans that are kidnapped. And all I hear from the Palestinian side is chanting Antifada or they're oppressed. Israel is controlling the, the water and the power. And yes, to that point, Israel does control the water and the electricity. And they shut it off. But at least tell the whole story. They shut it off on a conditional basis that we just want the hostages back. Release the hostages, we'll turn back on the water and the electricity. Israel has been in control of the water and power simply because Hamas does not care about its citizens. So they will use the water and the electricity against its own people. I mean, these are war crimes we're talking about. We're talking about rockets behind children, using innocent children and women as human shields. And what Hamas is catering to and what they're relying on is the arrogance of the West. And what I mean by that is the West is a victim of its own culture. They believe that everybody thinks the way they, they do. Everyone um, values life. Everyone cares about children. I mean, let's all negotiate. We all want the same thing, right? We all just just want, we all worship in the same God. We're all wanting the same thing. Let's just sit down and negotiate and talk this out. And no, you cannot negotiate with someone who has come inside your home to kill you. There is no negotiation. So all on college campuses, and for people, the adults that have children that are going off to uh, public colleges, please do your homework on that college. But I digress. They are people, they're students on college campuses that are protesting, screaming Antifada. Take a look. Notice, none of them are given a damn about the, the hostages that they currently have. No one cares about the innocent Jews that were just killed. Then you have Jews on college campuses, these same college campuses, that are just wondering why the administration is allowing this to happen. Take a look. So that is the dirty propaganda game that Hamas essentially plays. They go in and invade a country and they don't target the military. 
They're targeting innocents. They're targeting children. And then when Israel responds, because any country will respond to an act like that, Hamas hopes to cater to the values of the West and paint Israel as the aggressors. When Israel, it is, as I stated in my last presentation, they are literally calling uh, building managers, hospitals, wherever, please get everyone out because we have to take this building down. Now, all of a sudden, we're worried about the innocent Palestinian civilians. Anytime there has been a war, there's always innocents that get caught in the crossfire. Many times we pray for them, we send our condolences, but it's to tackle a bigger threat. The evil that exists there. For example, World War II, as, we're, as the Allies are going in to defeat the Nazis, they set fire to Dresden and kill almost a million innocent lives. A million. But it was necessary to get rid of the evil regime that was in power. After 9-11, America declared war on terrorism. We went into Iraq. An estimated 200,000 innocent died. Iraqis died. Nobody cares more about the innocent Palestinian civilians than Israel does, than the IDF does. They're literally calling in advance. They're letting them know in advance. Israel has to put down this threat because it has to prevent World War III. Let me explain what I mean. Hamas committed an atrocious evil. And Israel has to respond. Because if it doesn't, then to the north of Israel and southern Lebanon is Hezbollah. Hezbollah is much worse than Hamas. And that is why we have the current United States President Biden warning Hezbollah not to get involved. Because where Hamas went in and killed 1,400 innocent individuals, innocent Jews. Hezbollah has greater firepower. Have about 100,000 100, rockets aimed at northern Israel and could take 20 to 30,000 Jewish lives in an afternoon. They are a much bigger threat. And if Hezbollah sees weakness from Israel, they'll attack. And now you have Israel fighting a front on Hamas in the south and trying to deal with Hezbollah in the north. Israel will have no choice but to... Activate the Air Force, go into Lebanon again, and put down a terrorist organization. They do that, and Syria and Iran gets involved. Now, Iran is backed by China and Russia. Now we're talking about nuclear weapons in World War III. Is that a big enough picture for you to see what we're dealing with? Israel has to, has to go in and deal with this threat. Again, are the Palestinians being oppressed? I say yes, but it isn't by Israel. Notice something. Israel, the population, 20% of it, 
are Arab. 20%. Do you know the percentage of Jews in the Gaza? Zero. In Jordan? Zero. Syria? Zero. Iran? Zero. Lebanon? Zero. And for all this talk about the Palestinians and what they're dealing with, have you ever seen a map? Egypt is right there on bordering Gaza. And do you know what they did? They set up two walls and a military behind the second wall and shut their doors to those Palestinians. Now these are your people, right? These are Arabs. Do you know what Jordan did? Expelled the Arabs. Expelled the Palestinians to Lebanon because they didn't want to deal with it. Why? Because in 2006, Hamas took over. The Palestinians voted and they wanted Hamas in control. So Egypt said, no, we don't want that. We, we, we definitely don't want that in our country. Jordan closed their doors. They don't want to deal with Hamas. It is a terrorist organization. Some people are trying to water it down and to, uh, it's just a political movement. No. Call it what it is. It's a terrorist organization and it boggles my mind how we in the West like to... the Well, it, there's two sides and they try to understand and comprehend and 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 maybe there's a, there's a side that we don't know and instead of believing who they are. They show you. They're going live. They're on Facebook. It was a grandmother that was killed by Hamas. They hacked into her Facebook account and showed pictures of her dead for all of her family to see. Maya Angelou said if someone shows you who they are, believe them. It kills me that some people in the West don't want to believe what they're seeing right before their very eyes. They want to be a martyr for the cause. They don't value life. Call it for what it is. That you want to try to analyze and understand and what's the other side of the story, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You cannot hope to understand a terrorist that just wants to commit evil. And for the people, the individuals that are saying that, well, this is a land dispute. Israel cannot give up enough land. They cannot give up enough land to satisfy the Palestinians, to satisfy Hamas. Do you want to know why? Because they don't want us to exist. Period. Israel literally gave up Judea, Samaria, and the Gaza. Israel abandoned the Gaza and gave it to the Palestinians in 2005. They chose to elect a terrorist organization that doesn't give a damn about them. Period. They instill terror and fear into its citizens. They don't value life. They're setting up rockets and whatnot at schools and hospitals. And because the Palestinians are scared to death, they just go along with what Hamas does. And that's exactly how every violent regime takes over. How do you think the Nazis did it? The peaceful majority were irrelevant. They were irrelevant. 
because it is the radicals. It was the evil uh, organization that pushed the agenda. And as I stated, they play a dangerous game. They come in and they kill, rape, kidnap, filming it. They're not quiet about it. And then they set up propaganda to where they're calling on a rage day. Today, October 13th. And you have people that say, no, it's, it's, they're just depressed. They don't know how to express themselves. Maybe if we just try to see a, a diplomatic solution. Their own brothers, fellow Palestinians, fellow Arabs, Egypt closed the door, built two walls. Jordan expelled them. You have surrounding Arab countries that don't want anything to do with them because they chose to elect a terrorist organization. And they are counting on you to try to sympathize with them and try to let your mind wonder on, you know, why would, why would they do that? Why? There has to be something else. No, there doesn't. It, it really doesn't. They just want to instill terror. They want to wipe Jews off the face of the earth. And so, if you don't see that, because like I said, they're not shy about it. They're going live on Facebook, posting videos, pictures. They're not shy about it. If you refuse to see it when it's right there in your face, then it's one of two reasons. One is, is that you are so blinded and hope that you can reason with the terrorists. You can get inside their mind and find out why it, there, there has to be some kind of innocent reason that they're doing this. They're, you know, what, what makes them, you know, you're just curious. Or two, you just hate Jews. And as I've stated, two things can be true at once. I stand with Palestine fine. The innocent, my heart goes out to the innocent Palestinians that are getting caught in this, this war. That's fine. But my question is, why can't you condemn Hamas at the same time? Why can't you say anything about, please release the hostages. Hamas, release the hostages. Where, where is that chant? Hamas, release the hostages. Some people don't want to accept things that are right in front of your face. That are right in front of your face. Hamas has showed you who they are. They are an evil terrorist organization. And there is nothing that would cause someone to pick up arms and go into another country specifically target civilians kill the father rape the mothers kill and rape the children Can you think of any cause? Can you think of anything that could make you do something like that? I'm willing to bet no. If someone shows you who they are 
believe them. Hamas has shown you who they are. Will you believe them? Because the fact is, is I do. And I stand with Israel. My heart goes out to those hostages, those victims, on both sides. Fine, you want to say the Palestinian and on both sides. My heart goes out to both of them. But I absolutely condemn evil. And you have to hate evil. I condemn what Hamas has done. Everybody is pointing to what Israel is doing to go in to Gaza to put down this threat. Nobody's talking about what Hamas did to start it. And everybody's trying to pull theories out of thin air. There are conspiracy theories. Oh, this is this isn't really happening. It's a it's a hoax. It's a distraction. All these images and whatnot. This is AI generated. And where the hell are the damn people? Fourteen to fifteen hundred dead. Several few hundred hostages, including 14 Americans as of the recording of this presentation. Where's the, where is your outrage? I am looking for a Palestinian moderate. I'm looking for a Muslim moderate. Yeah, I stand with the Palestinians and the evil um, and the innocent lives that are being lost in Palestine. Great. I do too. But what about the condemnation of what started this? Hamas showed you who they are. Will you believe them.